Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Life, where today we're looking at this unique red and orange flowered plant here. Its scientific name is Asclepius curasavica. Yeah, that one. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is tropical milkweed, which is kind of sort of... Oh, there's some seeds for you. And a seed pod, and that, and then a stuff that keeps going up. Anyway, this plant is kind of problematic in the monarch, scene, monarch butterfly support scene. I'm going to explain that in a moment, but anyway, let's get into the details. It's commonly called, as I said, tropical milkweed. Now, it is in the Apocynaceae family, which is the dogbane family. Called that because, you know, some of the, some of the plants in there are bad for dogs, obviously. It is, the name Asclepius is named after Asclepius, the Greek god of healing. Which is ironic, because most Asclepius are kind of poisonous. Um, they have a milky sap that is mild irritant and or mildly toxic. And so it's kind of ironic that it's named that. Anyway, Kerasavica, despite what you think, is not named for the armored breastplate, but actually derived from the name Kirako, the island. This plant is native to the American tropics, and it's actually not native to North America, and it's discouraged for planting, and again, I'll get to that in a moment. But anyway, let's go to the stats real quick. It is hardy in USDA zones 8 through 11. It is evergreen up to zone 9B, so in the winter, if it survives, it'll die back to the ground here at 8A. Its pH preference is 6 to 8, and... It prefers full sun and or partial sun where it gets the bright morning sun and the afternoon shade or something to that effect. You can see it's got some lovely foliage, long, tall stalks. Um, its height can be two to three feet and its width can be one to two feet. However, this plant didn't get the memo and it's pushing three and some change. As you can see, it's almost at the gutter line. There's Alistair being a ham hock. Anyway, it's trying to reach up to get Alistair, because apparently nothing can be more fabulous than the tropical milkweed. So, its other names are Mexican butterflyweed, bloodflower, cottonbush, and scarlet milkweed. Which, with flowers like these... Oh, here's some unopened. I mean, look at that color. I mean, it's totally deserved to be called all of that. For once, all the common names fit, and the cottonbush part comes from the fluff on the seeds, which is a common feature in the milkweed family, the butterflyweed family, that grouping, Asclepius. That's normal for them. Allows them to disperse their seeds on the wind, kind of like a dandelion. Anyway, now for the deets. Its foliage is a host to a protozoan parasite. I would list it here. It's shortened to OE, but the name is so long and complicated, I actually could not quite figure out how to pronounce the darn thing. And I'm sorry for the jiggle vision on the camera. This plant is so tall that the camera tripod just wasn't cutting it. But um, yeah, that protozoan parasite, apparently what happens is because the foliage doesn't die back after blooming like in other milkweed species, this parasite accumulates and then it passes through the adult monarch's digestive tract as they get the nectar and they poop, and it ends up on the foliage, and then when they lay their eggs in their larvae, their larvae eat the foliage and hyperaccumulate the parasite and die. Yeah. Pleasant. However, there is one perk to this plant, and one reason you shouldn't overwhelmingly discard it necessarily, there are a couple things you can do about that. Let me start with the things you can do about that. First and foremost, it is recommended that after blooming, you trim it back, and you see this new growth? That's post-blooming new growth. You can get it to put new growth, and that can limit the parasite. So that's an option. You can cut it back two or three times a year and get this response, and it should reduce the problem. Now, if you haven't got the time or energy to do that, because, I mean, when you've got a garden like mine, time and energy are rationed out. Well, there's one perk to this plant. Hummingbirds love it. They will fly right up to these blossoms, and they'll lick, and they'll fight each other, and you can hum the Star Trek fight theme, you know, the one that's like, duh, 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 duh. you can hum that watching them beat each other up. It's the best thing ever. I mean, some people watch daytime soaps, I watch my hummingbirds get into little fist fights. It's awesome. But anyway, the flowers themselves are provide nectar and food for a lot of species of pollinators. So it's not just the monarchs going on, there are other things. So there's that at least. Now the downside of this plant is that it has a very long taproot and once you plant it where you plant it, leave it alone. Do not dig it up. If it's in a pot, don't mess with it. Because that taproot probably will hung down to the bottom of the pot and if that pot's in contact with the ground, it's not got a hole when it's in the ground. 
Fortunately, all you have to do is wait for winter to do what winter does. So there is that. The only problem, health problem it has is that in the middle of summer or at some point it may get aphid problems and from them and the honeydew that comes out of their backside, um, it may get sooty mold and you can clear that up with a spray of water from a hose or a simple insecticidal soap. It's not really, I mean, aphids are basically like chump change in the insect world. There are so many things that eat them, they are so vulnerable to all of the pesticides. I mean, a stiff fart could probably kill them. That's what makes them great. They're soft body. They can't even take a good blow. I mean, to heck with little boogers. Um, so beyond that, beyond that, apparently, um, I just want to show you this. I'm going to zoom up again. Alistair thinks he's a raindrop. The farm cats are obviously on some kind of drugs, and I don't know what it is. But anyway, so that's the summary of tropical milkweed. It's not quite the villain you think it is. Its seeds don't readily self so You have to intentionally buy it or germinate it in Zone 8A, so it's not that bad. The monarch thing, yeah, it's not great. However, considering that I have so many milkweeds and only one of these, I should be okay. Having a specimen of this should be fine. When you devote your entire monarch garden to it, you're just being a jerk, and you need to stop. There are many milkweeds, as you will soon find out, and it doesn't have to be all this one. Even though it is really pretty, and there are other colors, there's red, pure red ones, there's pink ones, there's... Yeah, you can have a specimen or two, but don't anchor your entire uh, monarch garden on this. So, that's about all we've got on this plant. If you have any thoughts on tropical milkweed, love it, hate it, basically compared to Hitler or whatever, please leave those in the comments section. If you, you know, I want to hear what y'all think. Um, if you have any thoughts on milkweeds in general, please put them in the comments section. I do read those. So with that said, if you haven't already hit like subscribe. And of course, uh, the forge blog is on hiatus till January. It will be back. And with that said, keep them growing and thanks for watching.